In this video, we're going to talk about the LU factorization of a matrix. Now, suppose we have a matrix A, which is M by N. It does not necessarily have to be a square matrix. Any size of matrix is appropriate here. So let A be an M by N matrix, which has an echelon form, which can be obtained solely by replacement row operations. So we can get from A to its echelon form, which we're going to call the echelon form U. Um, it'll have the same dimensions that A does, of course. And if we can get there with only using um, replacement row operations, then there's going to exist another matrix, L, which is going to be M by N. This one is a square, such that A will factor as L times U, where what conditions can we expect for the matrices L and U? Well, U will be an echelon form of A that we obtain from these row replacements. And also, L is going to be a lower unit triangular matrix. So remember that what that means. Uh, lower triangular means that everything below the main diagonal will be, uh, well, everything above the main diagonal will be zero, I should say. So unit triangular means we'll have ones along the diagonals. We could have anything else we want below the diagonal, whatever, uh, but we'll have zeros above the diagonal. So we get this unit lower triangular matrix. And in particular, the numbers that are going to be below the one diagonal there is going to come from the replacement operations we do. So whenever you do a row replacement where row I is replaced with row I plus C, row J, you're actually going to put a negative C inside of the IJ position. So the numbers below the, the diagonal here come from these row replacements. And the argument on why this factorization exists, and this is called the LU factorization, not a very clever name, but it's what's commonly referred here. The, the, the proof behind the LU factorization really comes from the elementary factorization we had done in the previous lecture. So when computing the echelon form of a matrix, the scaling operation, I just want to mention, is never actually needed. Um, when you look at Gauss-Jordan elimination, scaling is not required until the backwards phase. The forwards phase does not require uh, scaling whatsoever. Um, sometimes interchange might be necessary in the forward phase, but like we said, for this, for this theorem here, we're making the assumption that interchange is not necessary. And I'm just making the point that scaling matrices is never necessary uh, to get into echelon form. So suppose that A reduces to an echelon form U without any interchange whatsoever. Uh, then there's going to be some sequence of elementary row operations. There are going to be replacement operations that transforms A into U. Um, and let's say there's P many of those. Now, each and every one of those row operations will correspond to an elementary matrix. So let's say that the first elementary row replacement corresponds to the matrix E1. The second one corresponds to E2. The last one corresponds to EP. Until eventually we see that we have this factorization that EP times EP minus 1 all the way down to E2, E1 times A is going to equal U. Now, if we multiply by the inverse matrix on the left side, we can move this product of elementary matrices to the right-hand side, and we end up with the statement that A equals the inverse of the product of all those elementary matrices times U. Uh, then, of course, if you take the inverse of a product, the shoe-sock principle comes into play. You put your socks on, then your shoes, but then you take your shoes off, then your socks. That will reverse the order of each of the elementary matrices. So now E1 shows up first, then E2, and then EP is at the end. But we take inverses of each and every one of these things. Now the inverse of an elementary matrix is an elementary matrix. And in particular, if you have an elementary matrix of replacement type, its inverse will be a replacement type. And that's why we have an inverse C that shows up here. Uh, because we performed the operation, we added C times row J. Well, because of the shoe sock principle, you're going to actually be taking the inverse of C. And so then we're going to define L to be the product of all of these elementary matrices. Now, if you have in the forward phase, if you are doing an elementary operation, which, were, which is replacement, this is going to put a number below the main diagonal because you're taking a row from above and adding a multiple of that to a row below. So each and every one of these elementary matrices is going to be a 
forward phase replacement matrix. They, these are all going to be unit lower triangular matrices. And as we talked about previously, the product of a unit lower triangular matrix will likewise be unit lower triangular. And, and I should also mention the inverse of a unit lower triangular matrix is a unit lower triangular matrix. Therefore, the product of of these elementary matrices L is going to also be a unit lower triangular matrix and the coefficients, the scalars inside of that matrix are going to be determined exactly by these uh, elementary raw operations we've talked about here. So the reason why it's so often important to go through proofs of mathematical statements is that the proofs illuminate on why it's true and it often gives us clues on how it is true. That is, it gives us, the proof here actually gives us an algorithm for computing the LU factorization of a matrix. So the first thing to do is to compute, you know, to start with your matrix A, and you're going to row reduce it to find your echelon form using only, uh, not backwards phase, what, what, why is that saying that? We need to be doing forward phase uh, row replacement operations. Uh, no interchange, no scaling whatsoever. So row reduce A into U. Once and then keep track of the raw operations you did. And while what when you get to U, then you go back and you can look through the row replacements you did. And so for each time you do the replacement, row I transforms into row I plus C row J, you're going to put a negative C in the IJ position. And honestly, I do this at the same time. And I want to show you in an example how we can do this. So consider the following four by five matrix A, we're gonna work over mod 11 in this example. Uh, switching the field from the real numbers to the complex numbers to the finite field ZP or any other field, it doesn't really make any difference on how this calculation is gonna go. So because the matrix A has four rows, the, uh, the matrix L is gonna be four by four. Uh, and then the matrix U will also be 4 by 5. The echelon form will have the same shape that A does. L, though, will just be the number of rows because we're multiplying on we're multiplying on the left of U. So it needs to be 4 by 4. So what I'm going to do over here is you're going to see to the left the sequence. Uh, we're going to see the sequence of reduction from A to U. Now, U just has to be any echelon form. And so we're going to gra grab U to be the first echelon form. Um, that as we broke reduce A right here. L is going to be this 4 by 4 matrix. And what we know about L is the following. It's unit lower triangular. So we have ones along the diagonals. It's lower triangular. So everything above the diagonals is going to be zero. The stuff that's below the diagonals, we don't know what those are yet. And so we're going to determine that through our row reduction here. So this right here is just our original matrix A unaffected. So the first thing we do to row reduce it, again, no interchange, nothing like that's possible here. We're gonna first put a pivot position in the one, one spot, and then we have to get rid of all the numbers below. So how are we gonna get rid of the seven that's down here? Well, to get rid of, uh, to get rid of the seven, what we would have to do is we have to take seven divided by two, we're gonna subtract row one from row two in that regard. But what is seven over two working mod 11? Uh, we could say add 11 to 7, that would give us 18 over 2, which would reduce to 9, mod 11. So we're going to take row 2 minus 9 times row 1, that's going to take care of the 7 that's below. Uh, the next one, how do you get rid of the 2 right here? That's pretty easy, you're just going to take 2 minus 2, so we'll take row 3 minus row 1. And then for the, for the 5 right here, to get rid of the 5, we have to take row 4 minus 5 divided by 2 row 1. But what is 5 halves? Just like the 7, I'm going to replace the 5 with 5 plus 11, which is 16 over 2. That reduces to 8. And so we're going to subtract 8 times row 1 to cancel those things out there. And these this, this observation here is critical because we have row 2 minus 9 row 1, we're going to add a 9 in the 2, 1 position. We're taking the opposite of the negative 9 we have right here. Uh, because we're taking row 3 minus row 1, we're going to put a positive 1 in the 3, 1 position because, again, we take the, the additive inverse of this coefficient. And lastly, because we have row 4 minus 8 times row 1, we're going to put a positive 8 right here. If you always think of your replacements, row i minus c times row j, 
If you think of it that way, then you're always going to put a C inside of your matrix, the opposite of the sign you have right there. So now we actually have to go through these calculations right here. Uh, so notice that um, if we go through this, negative 9 when you're working mod 11 is the same thing as plus 2, row 2 plus 2, which is a little bit easier in terms of multiplication. So I'm going to take row 1 and times it by 2. Um, so 2 times 2 is 4. Notice that 7 plus 4 is 11. That's what's going to cancel out right here. Uh, we're going to take 4 times 2, which is 8. 6 plus 8 is 14. Uh, subtract 11, you're going to get a 3. Then we're going to plus 20 right there. 2 times 10 is 20. 23, um, if you take away 22, you're going to end up with a 1. Uh, 5 times 2 is 10, plus, thir plus 3 is 13. Subtract 11 would be 2. And then lastly, for the second row, you're going to get 2 times 9, which is 18, plus 1 is 19. If you subtract 11 from that, you get 8. All right, so that's how that row simplifies. Uh, doing the next one here, we're just going to subtract row 3 from a row. We're going to subtract from row 3, row 1. So we get a minus 2, so that's a 0. Uh, we're going to get 6 minus 4, which is a 2. We're going to get 7 minus 10, which is negative 3, which is the same thing as 8 mod 11. We're then going to get 1 minus 5, which is negative 4, which is the same thing as 7. And then 8 minus 9, that gives us a negative 1, which is the same thing as 10 mod 11. And then for this one right here, uh, row 4 minus row 8. Again, multiplying by 8 is a little bit bigger than I want to do right now. So we're going to do row 4. Um, we can replace negative 8, of course, with plus 3. 3 row 1. And so let's take 2 times 3, which is 6. Notice 5 plus 6 is 11, a.k.a. 0. Uh, you're going to take 4 times 3, which is 12, plus 0, which is 12. You can subtract 11 from that and get a 1. Uh, 10 times 3 is 30. 37, if you subtract 33 from it, you're left with a 4. Uh, 4 times, sorry, 5 times 3 is a 15. Plus 8, uh, that's going to give us 23, reduces to 1, mod 11. And then the last one, 9 times 3 is 27, plus 1 is 28. We subtract 22 from that, and that leaves a 6 behind. So that's the first level of row reduction. So then we're going to move our pivot to the... Uh, to the 2-2 two, two position right there. And so now we have to get rid of the numbers below it. Again, no scaling, no interchange going on right here. So if we just focus on the inter, uh, the replacements, we got to get rid of the 2 and the 1 that's below this thing right here. So to do that, we got to get rid of the 2. So we're going to take row 3 minus 2 over 3, row 1. But then we think of how do you write 2 thirds as a fraction mod 11? Well, 2 over 3, you could add 11 to the top. Uh, that's going to give you 13 over 3. That's not divisible by 3, so let's add 11 again. So we get 24 over 3. That's an 8. And so we're going to take row 3 minus 8 times row 2. What that tells us in terms of L is that if we take row 3 minus 8 times row 2, that means in the 2, 3 spot, excuse me, in the 3, 2 spot, you're going to put a positive 8. And then the next thing, right, we have to do, we have to get rid of this 1 right here. How do we get rid of the 1? Well, we have to take row 4 minus 1 over 3, row 2. But 1 third, how we write that in mod 11 is 1 third, we could write as 12 thirds. I added 11 to the numerator, and that becomes a 4. So we're going to take row 4 minus 4 times row 2. Whoops. Uh, and so that we're, therefore we're going to put a positive 4 right here because we're subtracting 4. Now in terms of multiplication, if you want to make life a little bit easier, like we saw before 8, we could replace it with a 3. Row 3 plus 3 times row uh, 2. Like so. So we're going to take the third row times everything by 3. So if you take 3 times 3, it's a 9. 2 plus 9 is 11. So that should cancel out. Uh, you're going to take 8 plus 3 which is also 11, so you're going to get another 0 right there. 2 times 3 is 6. 7 plus 6 is 13, which reduces to 2, mod 11. And then 8 times 3 is 24, plus 10 is 34, which if you subtract 33, you get a 1 right there. Um, four, uh, row 4 minus 4, row 2. I actually think 4 is a small enough number to do multiplication by in my head. Simplify. I'm just trying to keep things easy here. 
Um, so we're going to take 3 times negative 4, which is going to be negative 12. If you add 1 to negative 12, you get negative 11, which will give you 11. Well, 0, right? Mod 11. Uh, then you're going to take 4 minus 4. Notice that also cancels out to be 0. Uh, you're going to take 2 times negative 4, which is negative 8. Plus 1 is a negative 7, which if you add 11 to that, you get plus 4. And then 8 times negative 4 is negative 32. We add 6 to that. That should give us... Well, and if you, if you don't like negative 33, of course, or negative 32, be aware that if you added 33 to that, that just gives you a 1. 6 plus 1 is 7. So we get the reduced form right there. And so then the last step to do right here is we then move our pivots to the 3, 3 position. We got to get rid of the 4 below it. So we're going to take row 4 minus 2 times row 3. Uh, notice in this situation, you have to take 4 divided by 2. And as usual integers, that's a 2 right there. No big deal whatsoever. So to, to take row 4 minus 2 times row 3, we're going to put a plus 2 in the 4, 2 position. Right? We're taking the opposite of the number we see right here. Now notice we have constructed our matrix L. We filled in the lower diagonal, the no, lower triangular region by using the coefficients from the row replacements. Now to finish this thing off, we're going to, whoops, we're going to take two times four, two times two, which is negative four, excuse me. Then we're going to get negative two right there. So that ends up giving us a five in that position, a zero right here. And so let's then record what we have. If we copy down the echelon form that we've built, because this matrix now is the matrix U, we're going to copy that down. And we copy it down exactly as we have it. So the first row is identical, 2, 4, 10, 5, 9. The second row, 0, 3, 1, 2, 8. The third row, 0, 0, 0, 2, 1. And then the last row, which we just modified, 0, 0, 0, 0, 5. So you just bring down the echelon form exactly how it is. That's U. And then the matrix L, which we were building up here, we bring it down on the left. L for left there. I mean, it's actually for lower triangular, but that's fine. Um, and so it's going to be unit lower triangular. So you can see the lower triangular region right here. And the coefficients are exactly what we wrote down. 9, 1, 8, 8, 4, 2, just like we saw right here. And this gives us the... This gives us the the LU factorization of a matrix. So without any without any scaling or interchange, you row reduce your matrix A into echelon form. That gives you your U. And then keeping track of the row replacements you do, put their inverses inside of the columns, going one by one by one through it. And that'll construct your matrix L, uh, which we see right here. And we have the LU factorization.